In today's episode, we are going to be taking a look into all things tech right here at Tech Show North. Don't go anywhere. Hello to you and welcome to The Hive, the home of everything news, reviews, interviews and more. Now today we are here in Manchester at Event City at Tech Show North where we're going to be taking a look into all things tech and what is expected for the future. So without further ado, let's dig straight in and have a look. So we're here at the Omni CX stand and we are joined by Ben. Ben, good afternoon to you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, what is it, kind of the products and services that you're offering today? What is it? I guess the core of what we're doing, which is in line where I think the, the market is uh, shifting, is behind our whole platform. Each product is driven by data. I know that's a great buzzword to throw out there. At the end of it, we want to allow our businesses, our retailers, to provide personalised data-driven experiences to their customers. So whether it be our 360 degree customer view module, or our OMS systems or our pod systems, it's all data-driven, it's all connected and I think that's a big differentiator for us and our competitors out there. That sounds great. Now, um, looking at your industry in particular, moving forward into the future, uh, which I know is probably not too far away, is there anything in that your industry in particular that you think is the next big thing? Is there something that we should be looking out for from a business point of view? Is, is there anything you think? Yeah, well, I think we've all we all understand the threat from the big online giants such as Amazon. Um, maybe less so in Western world, Alibaba. But in reality, where the existing retailers are, which are probably the ones that are not innovating, the future retailers the future giants of retail are actually coming out of social channels, uh, the Insta brands. And so what, what I see is happening is that the, the, the types of software and solutions that are going to come are going to be have to answering these types of needs around the, the Insta, Insta brands, but also, and coming more, so, more and more importantly for the consumer, is again personalised experience. If you're not personalising it, um, then you're not going to capture them and keep them coming back and they're going to go somewhere else. I think all businesses need to be considering how they do that. Exactly, no, and it's perfect. Uh, ben, thank you very much for joining us. Have a great day. Thank you. So we're here at the top brewer stand and joined by the lovely, we've got Abby and Lucy, good afternoon to you, good hope you're both well. Now we've stumbled across this, we're walking past and any, if you're anything like us, you'll love a good coffee. Now I've noticed there's a tap and there's a tablet there, what, what, tell me what's happening, what's going on? Okay, so this is the top brewer iPad coffee machine. Love it, love it. Quite revolutionary, so the idea is everything comes through one tap. We've got all your different speciality coffees, so you can have flat white, cappuccino, yeah, but also through the same tap, you can have still water, sparkling water. So yeah, it's, uh, the idea is it's sleek, it's all under one, all under the counter, all the gubbins are under there, so yeah. Which I was thinking, because it actually looks great, because I've seen in similar businesses where they'll have uh, these as hot taps only, yeah. uh, so you can have like make a quick coffee and all that, but then I saw you had the tablet with it. So how does the tablet work by telling this what to do? How, how does it do it? So it's all connected through Wi-Fi to the coffee machine underneath. Okay, it's all direct trade beans. So it's fresh milk. It's got a fresh milk fridge underneath as well. So yeah, so it does luxury Belgian chocolate as well, which I didn't mention. So you just got everything in one tap. <laughs> so right then, so what we need to do is uh, hopefully if we can see it in action. So yeah. talk me through, what is it that we need to do then to get this uh, cup of coffee? So all you need to do, you've got your menu here, click on whatever icon you like, say it's flat white, and then you get extra options so you can adjust it. Basically it's completely customizable for any person. So you can make it stronger, that's your Monday morning, wake me up drink. Um, if you like less milk, basically just make it your own. Um, so start now. Easy and, as that. and it's as easy as that. So then now, if, like you said earlier, everything's hidden away under here, isn't it? So all the beans, the milk, wastage, all that kind of stuff. And then that's all filtered through there, yeah? Exactly, yeah. Perfect. So what's it doing now then? So inside now it's... Oh, let me come round to you. Let me come round to you. Go on, then tell me about it. So, okay, it tells you exactly what it's doing. So your customer knows exactly. So it's brewing right now. So that's that's tamping the beans through to make your perfect espresso. You've got your frothy milk coming through. So this has got the smallest milk foamer in the world in it as well. And there is your perfect. 
Look at that, perfect. Ladies, thank you very much. What a great innovation of tech. Go and check them out. So we're here on the Hark stand and we're joined by Jordan. Jordan, good afternoon to you. Okay. I'm very well, thank you. Uh, so we're here at the uh, the showcase today, but what is it that you and your company, what is it that you've got to offer today? What is it that you do as a business? Okay. So we're Hark and we're a technology company. We've designed a platform that can connect to any industry standard sensor, whether it's a building management system, a process automation controller for manufacturing, or even energy meters. And we stream data such as temperature, humidity, energy in real time up to the cloud where we analyze it for anomalies, help predict failures and reduce waste energy basically. Well it's because it's perfect because cloud now, cloud is key, cloud is like the big thing that we all use now and we all use it in your kind of day to day life but um, if I was, for example if I was a new business starting up um, and I wanted you guys to offer me a service in kind of layman's terms so if uh, myself or, or these guys didn't know, um, what is it that you could offer for my kind of business? Well, it depends on what type of business, um, but if you were a manufacturing startup, uh, for instance, and you had equipment, um, we would basically come in and help monitor the equipment, look at overall effective um, overall equipment effectiveness, uh, keep uh, an eye on if there's any anomalies, because obviously we want to keep downtime extremely low, and this so that's, that costs money. Um, and effectively, we're, we're looking to increase yields and, re and you know reduce downtime in that respect. If you're a slightly um, different style business in terms of like a retailer, we'll help monitor all the energy spot inefficiencies with large machines uh, like light for instance, light expense, uh, energy is expensive, um, we'll, we'll look at kind of keeping those costs down for you effectively. It's perfect. Now, I always ask this question and I've asked it to some of the other vendors that we've got here today. Um, technology now is moving forward and it is moving forward pretty fast. So is there anything that you're kind of anticipating that's going to be big in the future or is there anything that even as, as far as the company goes, um, is there anything big that you're anticipating or what would you like to see? Okay. Uh, yeah, no, that's a really great question. So um, in terms of when we're doing things like monitoring energy, the technology that we're seeing nowadays um, is, is to do with kind of renewable energy, energy storage, so batteries, for instance, um, and basically reducing energy costs by charging for like, things like batteries up overnight and discharging through the day. So basically this renewable tech, energy storage, these are the things that we're seeing kind of upcoming in the future uh, and are going to be a big driver for kind of reducing energy costs and also decreasing carbon as well. That's true, that is true. Uh, Jordan, a massive thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks a lot. So we're here uh, with Barclays Eagle Lads and we are joined by Darren. Darren, good afternoon to you, hope you're well. Uh, so we was kind of drawn over to your side because we've seen some part of the technology that we're going to uh, come into in a second. Uh, but what is it that you guys are offering as part of the Eagle Labs? What is it that you're doing here today? Perfect, so we're here supporting the landing. So we're based in Media City on the fourth floor and we are a community resource that supports the tech community within Media City and Salford, um, but also wider afield within the Northwest with their MVPs, rapid prototyping we do that with our um, equipment that we've got such as 3d printers and laser cutters that's perfect and it's funny you say about the uh, 3d printers because what we're going to do uh, if it's all right with you we're going to we're going to go over this way and, and we're going to have a little look at some of the 3d printers is that all right perfect yeah of course it is yeah definitely. so um 3d printing nowadays is well in my eyes it's the big tech that we've got moving forward now and it's as you can see from some of the, the bits that we've got down here um it's going to be doing some massive things so what is it that you're you're doing with the laser printing as such what is it that these can actually do okay so the the, the great thing about this type of equipment is <clears throat> it lets you create things that don't exist that's how uh, we kind of coin a phrase with it within um, our lab in particular such things like you see in here like the skull the trachea and the hip um, hip joint and that plays really nicely into our bias in our eagle lab which is in healthcare and particularly in med techs we work really closely with several trusts locally one in particular Salford Royal Foundation Trust and we'll work on preparational ideas and concepts educational tools um, and, and different mindsets or, or, or or ideas or concepts behind how we can shape the, the medical world by using such great equipment like 3D printers. It's perfect, and especially because now things like innovations like this and tech is moving forward massively. And I can already tell, I think, from one of the items we looked at earlier, um, that it's helping things massively. Like um, I believe there was a, a printing done of a child's uh, of a child's brain, wasn't yeah, there? Yeah, oh, that they've done, yeah. um, which I can see it's over there, which it helps massively in terms of uh, like the medical side of it um, to help identify kind of what's going on with a particular patient. So you can see from down here, what is it the kind of stuff that, what can it do? What, what is there anything it can't do? Or is it literally you can send anything to it and it does it? Uh, what's the kind of the stuff that we, we can expect to kind of do with it? Okay, perfect. So with these particular machines, these are quite household names, automakers. You do quite a lot with them and they will print in a um, quite a plethora of different materials from PLAs to nylons um, and to uh, quite flexible materials, what we call ninja flexes. Um, 
I always say that the machine will do exactly what you tell it to do. So I think that art is in the designer or in the data that you've got, to be perfectly honest. So if you've got a really good um, artist and they um, have created a particular thing to print, whatever it is, they'll, that will do what it says in the tin. So if it prints badly, it's because the design was bad. At the same, in the same breath, if you've got um, a set of data, say for instance a medical um, set of data on a hip joint or a um, part of the brain, then if you've used really sophisticated software um, very well, again, you've sliced it well, you'll be able to print whatever, whatever you, it is you're looking to print, such as hip joints, tracheas, skulls, so on and so forth. And that can be done outside of these printers on much more high resolution ones, you can do it in titanium, not necessarily on these, but in other printers, there's a there's a, a complete suite of different materials you can use to 3D print. It's fab, and like you were saying, I believe was this the trachea uh, or the trachea? Yeah, uh, what yeah. you're saying, look at, the, and that's all just done through there. Yeah, this one, uh, this particular <clears throat> print here was done on one of our high-resolution industry, uh, more industrial printers back in the lab. Yeah. Um, but this was a lady's trachea, so this was taken from a CT scan. Then we used particular software to come slice through it, make sure we got exactly what we wanted to print, run it through the uh, software to. to uh, make sure it was it was actual printable and then ran off the prints. That's amazing. Now, we've asked this to everybody yep. um, around all the vendors today. Because um, technology is moving so fast, and what is it that you're kind of, what's the biggest thing in tech that you would be anticipating? Or what is it that in a year's time, what's the next big thing in tech? Or what is it that you're excited about? What is it that kind of gets you going in terms of technology? What is it we're expecting? Yeah, so I think mine, mine would be artificial intelligence. And maybe that's quite a common theme, but AI I think is um, extremely valuable of, of how we handle it and curate and support it going forward. Barclays do a lot of um, AI events um, and AI um, knowledge sharing um, seminars around this because no matter, I believe, whatever industry or sector you sit within, artificial intelligence will be at the actual forefront of what it is you're trying to do from that, from that data collection, the, the, the machine learning that sits behind it. So personally, mine would be artificial intelligence. I think it sits with 3D printing. I think it sits with virtual reality, with wearable technologies, with health tech. I think it kind of underpins pretty much any kind of technologies that we're going to be working with or seeing over the next like 12 to 18 months. No, and you're right, and AI now is, is getting, it's it's massive, it's absolutely massive, and we can only expect big things from it as well. Uh, so Darren, I am going to, indeed going to let you go. Thank you very much for joining us, enjoy the rest of your day. So that has been us here at Event City at Tech Show North. Did you attend? What did you find was your favourite part of it? What are you excited to see in our tech moving forward in 2019? Let us know by getting those comments in the box below as we always love to read them. But if you haven't had enough of us already, there is plenty more content for you to see. All you need to do is check out the videos that you see on screen right now. And if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you hit the round subscribe icon. But from me, Ryan, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye for now.